let's see, curator in action. Rather than showing you offenses that all have already fired, let's actually f do some attacks to fire new ones. So right now it's 7, what, 7.32 p.m. here, and the most recent offense that I have is from 4.47 p.m. So let's actually go into this system, and what we have here is a domain controller and not even don't need to even log in i don't know the credentials of this system at all and uh, here what we have is a kali system and the command that is going to do the attack for this attack to work this is the zero logon and you can actually research the cve number it's 1472 and, and this attack is very nasty because all you need to do for the attack to succeed is have TCP IP connectivity. So let's say you compromise any machine within the network by phishing or whatever means. And all you need to know is the IP address of the machine you want to attack. Not a very hard to find information. You can do internal scans to find those out. Uh, and you know, Curator detect those, but let's, that's besides the point. And um, you're going to be attacking that machine by just providing the host name and the IP address by executing this command. Notice that it's performed the attack and boom, the machine has been compromised. Just to prove that the attack has succeeded, I'm going to run another command which is going to do a dump of all the hashes of this machine. Once the machine has been compromised, all I need to do is execute this Python script that uh, is going to give me all the hashes for this machine. Everything. The security of this company for this Active Directory system has gone through the windows, pun intended, through the window. Uh, so uh, this attack is, as you can see, it doesn't get any more nastier than that. And again, no action was needed to be performed at the domain control itself. This thing came from above and hit it uh, without knowing it. But let's see, let's go actually back to that curator system and refresh the screen and see what is it that curator saw out of all this. Okay. So we have an offense. Let me actually sort them by date. This is my most recent offense. Let me open it up and see. This is the actual name of the of the rule. Let's see the details of the rule. Actually, just to show you an example, what are the things that Curator saw? Well, it's, it saw that the, there was an authentication computer change, and the username was anonymous logon, which is suspicious, but still also happens normal. The password was changed, and also the log source name corresponds to the name of my uh, domain controller, and the target computer was also the domain controller. So when all those conditions are met, then this detects the zero logon uh, attack. We can see the name of the vulnerability. So that's an example of Curator detecting a very modern type of attack. And by the way, this is a by the time of the this recording, this attack is actually uh, very pertinent. So, so the previous attack may bring you to two questions. One is, uh, well, Jose, but those those that can be fixed with a patch. Uh, what happens if the machine are fully patched, like this machine is a Windows machine here, uh, and these other machine are full, fully patched. Uh, and, and also the, the question could be how, how can somebody gets access to, to your network right is that that easy well let me show you that it is uh, here's my uh, same Kali system that I'm going to be used for attacking that machine and I bring in my resource file and let me show you what what the guy is going to actually do I'm going to fish this guy I'm going to send an email that is so convincing that he's going to click on a particular Word document, we'll see it in a, in a minute, that has only this Word macro instruction. We downloads from the Kali machine, which is this 124 machine, an executable, 
that I created especially to attack this machine, so you're not going to find threat intelligence information about it. That's going to start as the, from the temporary directory as a process. But instead of sending it like that, because Curator can read those things, I'm going to send it like this, with the encode version. And that kind of garbles all that. Um, that's not what ENCODE Base64 is for, but that's beyond the point. That's one, one of the many techniques that the bad guys use to obfuscate their attacks. Let's actually execute the actual attack. Before I do that, let me actually close this offense. It's the one that we saw before. I don't know why that something wrong with the clock, because it's not 11 p.m. But let me actually close it. And in order to make sure that advisor knows about my system, I'm going to put a resolution. Uh, you can choose whatever the, the action. You can add more actions in here. I'm going to put policy violation. I'm going to put here a demo. Um, and that uh, gets actually closed, so we don't have any recent offenses. Let's go and execute the attack. So let's bring the Windows machine, as you see, fully patched. There's one document in here. Pay attention to this screen on the right, because when I click on the document, a session will be created. So let's say that the attacker is in the in Ukraine, and and uh, the guy opens the Word document. Again, it doesn't matter what how credible the, the Word document is. What you needed is the guy to click on it. The guy closes it, say, I don't know what this is. Uh, but now what the bad guy needs to do very quickly is achieve persistency because if I shut down this machine, I lose my session. I don't want to have possession of this machine forever. And just to show you that I have possession of this machine, at least for now, if I do sessions interactively one, which is the only session that we have, and ask for a shell, I'm in that Windows machine. Right? Uh, but again, this is not persistent. So how do I achieve persistency? Let me send this session to the background because I'm going to need it as a trampoline. Uh, one of the ways is when you escalate privileges, you can easily uh, achieve persistency. But uh, escalating privileges in Windows is not trivial because there's something in Windows called the User Access Control or UAC. So when you try to do anything that requires, no, I meant to run this uh, request admin rights. So if I right click here run as an administrator, you get that UAC that you, we see there, right? So unless somebody clicks in here, yes, <laughs> that thing is not going to escalate privileges. So this attacker is kind of stuck right now because this session won't, won't escalate privilege. But uh, where there is a will, there's a way, right? So uh, let's actually use another exploit from the Windows family uh, for local machines to bypass user access control, the tab for helper, and hit enter, and set the first session as the trampoline for this one. One, and then when I do an exploit, you see how easy it is for me to get a second session. You see a session number two being open, and you see that thing flashing on the screen. The guy may or may not see that. He doesn't, he doesn't know what it is, but I had a second session that has the capability of bypassing the user access control. Let me prove that. I'm not going to get just admin. I'm going to get system access. So I'm root. I'm ultra powerful on this machine. I can do whatever I want. And one way of achieving persistency is actually by uh, executing a Windows command like this one, for example, that is going to put that my love.exe, this is a registry modification, that is going to make sure that that my love64.exe starts up every time the machine reboots and is going to look in the task manager as a calculator. Let's actually issue that. Let me get a session again, a shell into Windows, and I'm system right now, so I can do whatever I want. And I can paste the content of the clipboard, hit enter, and the operation completed successfully. So, and you know, I can do all the things. I can exit here. I can clear the the Windows log because I hate I hate, log, hate logs. Uh, and, and I'll show you. Well, let me actually show you that right now. There is, a, in, you know, that in the video description of all my videos, there is a link to a folder. And in that folder, you'll find this document, the latest version of it. Uh, there's a section here, Think Like a Hacker. Let's see, what is that here? 
this is linked to all the videos boy there are quite a few of those uh, in here where I show the previous attack and all the all the details and even show you how you set that up in your own lab for you to learn some more right so I'm not gonna do all these things in order to keep the video short you can actually go there and see all those details but let's actually go back to curator and see what is it that curator saw up out of all this if we refresh this window here we should have a new offense in here and sure we have it that's the name of the actual machine it's actually and that you know, the time when you know was right and then it went to this thing 11 50 p.m. I don't know I need to see what that happened but that's beyond the point of what we're trying to show but I want to I hope that you are impressed with all these little things that I did notice all the rules that fire in curator previous escalation detect the power shell using encode you know, fileless uh, attack, the user act, the, the UAC, as you saw there, you know, all the things that I did, I clear all the Windows logs, all these things, you don't need all the rules to fire, just one that will fire, will open an offense and invite you to investigate what is actually that we did, and we get the nice time frame on when those actions uh, actually took place, right? So again, uh, just to show you, not, not just offenses that had fire, but also how these things work in real time. That's the beauty of Curator, that you get near real time, as close as real time can get detection of all those uh, bad things happening in your system.